Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video we are going to be checking out the all new top of the line D60 secure on the go soldering iron. Let's go. Oh, oh. So let's go ahead and crack this puppy open. Let's see what comes inside the box when you buy it. When you purchase a TS100, you're looking at about 50 bucks. When you purchase a TS80, you're looking at about $90. And this guy right here is only $34. So before you go crucifying it, just because it's a little bit cheaper, let's see what it really has to offer because maybe you don't want a hundred dollar soldering iron I don't know I've got like a really good one that I keep on my bench and on the go I do have a TS 100 I also have another secure model I actually reviewed it I will put a link for you down in the video description if you want to check that out that is the side-by-side -side unit of the TS 100 you can put it on the computer and program it and all that fancy schmancy but if you're not looking for that you're just looking to get the job done you want something reliable comfortable has plenty of heat to offer you don't have to worry about if you plug in a 6s you're in big trouble because it can only handle 4s you don't want these problems so you want something like this but you don't want to spend a million dollars this might be the right guy for you so let's go ahead and check it out and let's see all she come oh oh sh Okay. Oh, wow. All right. So right off the ripsker, she's coming with a bunch of stuff. We got a nice little sticker pack. And I've got an extra tip here. It looks like I have the TSB2. And, oh, it came with another tip. What tip is this? Okay. So this is the TSC1. This is the micro, micro tipper. And that is what I'm looking for. I am looking for when I want to get... And that ever so tiny spot, I have the correct iron to do it. I'll whip this out, plug it in, they heat up fast, and I'll go ahead and hit my tiny spot. So we're going to try today. We're going to see what kind of precision we can get with something like this. And then also just for everyday soldering or out in the field, you've got yourself the B2. So you got to have the B2. All right, so you get an instruction manual. That's good because if you don't know what you're doing, you can read this and hopefully it'll tell you everything you need to know. Now, right here, we have got a little soldering stand with a little sponge in there. I'm not going to open it because I have absolutely no interest in using this. I do not like these stands at all. I think it's cool that they give it just in case you don't have nothing or if you want to throw it in your bag and use this on the go, you've got it. But for me, I'll never use that. All right, so now we've also got our DC jack by XT60 connector. That is awesome. That allows us to be able to plug into any battery when we're out and we're in the field and we're doing our thing. Just pull out a battery, the same one you power your quad with, and go ahead and power up your iron and make that repair right in the field. Now that is super awesome, but it's nothing original. That is not something that none of these other irons offer, so let's not get too hasty about that. This guy right here though, this guy right here though, this is what it separates this. All these guys are coming with this and guess what you do? You just plug this bloop, right inside of your thing and that's all you got and you're doing your thing and that's it and whatever. Better enjoy it because it's all you're getting. Well, not with this guy. With this guy, you've got an adapter. So this means that I can power it up multiple different ways. I can plug this in and I can hit it with any power supply I want. As long as I check my ratings, my current versus voltage, this thing is handling anywhere from 12 to 14 volts. If you're in that range, you can power this any which way you want. You can even power it with a power supply. So if you have an on-the-go power supply or if you got one on your bench, great. Now let's go ahead and actually look at this beauty all on her own. Look at that. That is sleek looking. Oh yeah, nice big buttons. We've got a nice digital display right there. And one of the biggest, most bestest upgrades that you might not even care about is this is actually Type-C connector. 
That means that it's going to be more stable, better constant current. You're going to just be in better shape overall with a type C connector. This is top of the line connection right here. Flight controllers are changing to this. Phones have already changed to this. If you're not type Cing it out, then you're just not doing it right. Now, this thing here has a nice comfortable grip and I definitely like that versus the TS100 or any one of those other guys. I feel like they're just they're just never comfortable in my hand. Yes, they look good. Yes, you can program the screens, but they just they never really feel good. So, I'm happy to see that. Now, I know with the TS80 you can just click clack clack and you can change heads super super fast. I have no idea how this goes together. Oh, don't be hating. Don't be hate. Oh, that's not good. Okay. All right, so that can't be right. There's got to be something here that, there you go. All right, so we've got an Allen key set screw. What you do is you slide in your tip, and then you go ahead and you lock that down. And that's just a standard 1.5. It's nothing special. It's not a uh, connection that you don't already have laying around. I've already got it laying around just like that. Boom, now it's in, it's strong. Slide your rubber back over, and there you go. Now, you do get extra screws because if you lose that set screw, then your tip is not going to stay in. You also get an Allen key that is 1.5 just in case you don't have a driver. But if you don't have a driver, you need to get online right now and buy one. I don't want to hear any excuses. Here's our tip. Let's go ahead and crack our tip open. Mm. So there we go. So we've got ourselves a B2 tip. Now that's nice. That right there is just your everyday iron tip. You've got your iron and this is very simple. Watch this. Boom. Connected. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking type C. Woohoo. I am going to power this thing up with a basic cell phone charger and I'm, I, I hate to break the news to you, it, that's not going to work because that's only 5 volts and this thing requires 12 just to turn on. But at 12 volts you're not going to get what you're really looking for, at least in my opinion. You're really going to want to power this thing as high as you can. Personally I feel like 24 volts and nothing less. That'll get you the 60 watts and the 13 second heat up. Come on, who wants to wait a hundred seconds? I a hundred seconds, I've already better be done soldering and back in the air. There is no excuses for a hundred seconds. This should not be powered by 12 volts. Now, if you have no choice and you got to do what you got to do, then do what you got to do. But now it does let you know if you stick in too much voltage. So don't be worried about that, right? So what you're thinking is, okay, Dre man, I've got a six cell battery. You know, you got your, your 4.2 times six. That's going to get you up over 25, 25.2. How the hell am I going to power this thing at 25.2 on a fully charged six cell if it only takes 24? Well, I don't know. We're going to find out when I plug it in. We're going to see. Can it handle it? And if it can't, no need to worry. It will let us know right on the screen. Hey, too much voltage. Knock it off. Before we go ahead and dive into actually soldering some stuff, I do want to take a moment to show you guys how it works. If you just bought yours and that's why you're watching this video and you want to know how this works, I'm going to show you how to, how to uh, navigate through the operating system. <laughs> All right, so I am going to use a six cell battery. This one is a little bit beat up. This battery is actually quite old. This is a Bosch pack. If you have not tried Bosch batteries, you are missing out. These things are extremely reliable. So here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my XT60 and my XT60 and I'm gonna plug it in. All right, so as you can see, it's okay. And this thing, hold on. So it seemed to power up just fine, but before we go too far, I do want to check the voltage because I'm pretty sure we're at 25 volts. So there's the answer to your question. If you were curious, can this thing handle just a tad bit more because it's a 6L pack, like we talked about, it's going to offer just a little bit more than the maximum 24. You don't have to worry about it. We just powered it up just fine 
with 25 volts. It seemed like it accepted it, it did not mind. Let's go ahead and roll through this. 25, what does 25 mean? 25 is actually the temperature of this at this exact moment. So here you go. If you want to just power it up and have it heat up, you'll just press, or we're gonna call it short press A one time and power up and start running right up. So there you go, there's your temperature. Going, 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 going. Now, like we talked about, that's your temperature. So it's not saying 25 anymore, and that's because the tip is not 25 degrees anymore. It is now 100 and something degrees. All right, so how do we navigate through this? What you'll do is you'll hold down B, and then you'll become in your first menu, D. You see D10. What D10 is telling you, oops, I took too long. So D is standing for your standby or sleep timer. So if you leave your iron sitting too long based on the D number that you set, so if you set it on 10 minutes and then 10 minutes goes by and you haven't touched the iron, the iron knows that and the iron will actually begin to wind down these numbers till it reaches 100 degrees. Then it will patiently wait at 100 degrees unless you go over another certain amount of time and then it powers off all the way. But if it sits at that 100 degrees for just a minute or two and then you're like, oh crap, I need to get back to soldering, you pick up your iron, you give it a little, uh, a little shake. I would imagine just picking it up is probably just enough, but if need be, you would give it a little rattle and then it knows, hey, look, he picked me back up and it will start cranking right back up to the original set temperature. I'm gonna go down to one and how you save is you press both buttons. You'll see ESC and we are now saved. Now to get back in that menu, we're gonna hold down B again and then we can navigate through the menu by just pressing B, just like that. So you've only got three options. You've got your standby sleeper, you've got your compensation, and then you've got your temperature, and that's just your startup temp and your you know your normal temperature. All right, so here we go. So what we're gonna do is obviously we want this to be at the highest. Now to double check that, I'll press the A one time. That gets me in that menu, and now I can navigate through it, you know, whatever I want. So I do want to be at the highest, which is gonna be this way, and 400. That's the highest. And to save, what do we do? We press both, ESC, it's saved. I don't know why they picked ESC, I'm sure it stands for something. ESC, I mean, come on, electronic speed controller, yay, save. Here's what we got, we're gonna hold down B and we're gonna head over to compensation real quick. Boom, and then we're gonna navigate over to compensation and that's that right there and now pressing A one time will let us compensate. If you don't know what uh, temperature compensation is for a soldering iron, you probably shouldn't mess with it, but all it is really is a soldering iron is designed in a certain way because there's a lot of heat transfer. So when this thing's 400 degrees and then you touch some metal, that heat transfers and the compensation and the controller and everything inside of here knows what's going on and it adjusts the temperature to match what's happening so that way you have high consistency. So long story short, it just, if you're off a bit, you can use that to go up or down by negative 50 to positive 50. All right, so if you ever forget or you're unsure, on the back side it does list here 12 to 24 volts and then you've got 17 to 60 watts. That is what you can run through this guy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and power up and get our solder on. There are eight different tips to choose from, and that right there, my friend, is very, very important. Pilots, when you are soldering and you are soldering from a battery, it's important not to be negligent. Do not just leave this battery pump and juice, pump and juice, pump and juice, because this thing can go down to 12 volts, and when this gets down to 12 volts, you're in big trouble. So there's a nice little trick that I like to do. And I don't know how cool it is or how many people probably already do it. And if you've never done this, don't be stealing my idea without giving me my credit. But watch this. Boom. Now I'm able to keep an eye on my battery. So as you can see here, my battery's at 97%. I'm running at 25 volts. So what I do, now this probably does take a micro amount of voltage to power this actual meter, but I don't care. What I do is I leave that connected. 
I'll even set it here and just prop it where I can see it. So that way while I'm soldering, I've got a nice view on what my battery voltage is. All right, so let's go ahead and try this guy out. Wow, that did a really nice healthy bubble. Looks like it's working really well. I'm gonna just put a boatload of solder and see how it does. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nice. All right, that was a, a lot of solder that I just made liquid in no time, look at that. So 400 degrees is, is, is really nice. I feel like with these bigger joints, I probably would like five or 600, but that's just me personally. If you're new to soldering or you're not a real fast solderer, you might prefer that. But for me, I like a little bit hotter, but look at this. It's taken just fine, look at that. So it's soldering up your XT60 to power your board. Hey, you're in good shape. Let's go ahead and try to get uh, one of these uh, motor number two. Let's go ahead and get these three ready so that you can solder that motor up. All right. All right. There you go. Look at that working great. It seems like it just melts solder with without a problem at all. Yep. What what more could you possibly ask for for thirty four dollars? Come on, guys. Okay. Yes, sir. I know you guys are like, oh my gosh. All right, so we had a little bit of fun. We did a little bit bigger joints down here. We saw what it was like to go ahead and solder up a motor wire. And then we went ahead and we played around with some smaller pads. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and change our tip. And then what we'll do is we'll see what happens with a much smaller tip. And let's try to get off this capacitor. All right, so I'm able to pinpoint the heat. I'm warming it up. Oh my goodness, did you see how fast I got that off? Look at that. Oh, come on guys. Now, if you've got yourself a little bit of solder wick, you can go ahead and use that to clean these pads up. And then you can even use this tip to put yourself a new capacitor down. But unfortunately, we are not going to get into that. That is going to be the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that I answered any of your questions that you might have on this iron or just a portable iron in general. I hope that I sparked the fun of the hobby in you and you want to even get a portable soldering iron so you can have some fun making repairs in the field and doing tiny small repairs at home on the bench. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you on the next one.